Hello, believers. Welcome to the Just Praise Him radio show. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and the title of my message today is, What is Your Biggest Problem? Um, I'm wearing headphones in this video because I've had so many people tell me that it's difficult to hear the audio on the podcast if I just rip it from the video. So I'm recording on here at the same time I'm recording on here. You'll be reading from Matthew chapter 7. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asks, asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how, to get, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Okay. Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Okay, it goes on to talk about, You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Alright, um, what is your biggest problem? If you could solve any problem in your life today, what would it be? I want you all to think about that for a minute. What problem would you solve if you could solve any problem today? No matter how blessed our lives are, there's always something we would like solved, isn't there? When I first moved to Princeton in Texas, I thought that my biggest problem was lack of money. And then I thought it was my loneliness for my family in Oklahoma. When I moved across town in Princeton... After the stroke, I thought that my biggest problem was that I had no friends. So I would sometimes think about, you know, what can I do so I can make more friends? I spent over eight years in Princeton without a single close Christian friend, y'all. That's a long time. As it turned out, my real biggest problem was that I was in idolatry. But the devil was making me think it was lack of friends. My biggest problem here in Arkansas, first it was that I lived in the house of horrors where the snakes dropped by to visit. And then, about a month after I moved into town, my best friend fell under the spell of a deceiving spirit. And it has become my loneliness for fellowship with him because we we're really, really close. I don't have very many friends as close as I am with him. And for my son, I miss him and I miss my son terribly. Someone forwarded me a devotional email by Oz Hillman this week that said something very profound. Whenever God is slow to answer our prayers, what we believe about God is revealed. I want to talk to you all today about one of Satan's favorite weapons. One of Satan's favorite weapons is to distract you when you are in sin and make you think that your real problem is something else so you won't notice that you're in sin and repent and turn from your sin. Whatever sin we might be in, which in Princeton, mine, the biggest one was the idolatry. I'm not saying that I don't ever get into sin, y'all. We all get into sin of one kind or another. And that's not going to change until Jesus comes back to get us because it's in our DNA. But whatever sin we're in, the enemy wants to keep us from recognizing it and repenting of it. To do that, he just gives you something else to focus on. Sometimes it's somebody else's sin, which is why I was reading you the scriptures about judge not and you won't be judged. And then, if y'all noticed, in Matthew 7, 
I was noticing the progression of this when I was copying it. It starts out being, don't judge. Okay? And then it says, why are you looking at your brother's sin and you're not looking at your own sin? Okay? So right there, God is telling us, hey, you're looking at the wrong thing. And then it goes on to say, don't cast your pearls before swine. If you've ever tried to witness to or point out someone's sin to someone who doesn't believe in Christ or doesn't believe that it's important to stay free from sin, you know what it means to cast your pearls before swine. Pearls are like pearls of wisdom, God's Word. Pearls of wisdom. And if you cast them before people that couldn't care less, that's casting your, your pearls before swine. Okay, and then he goes on to talk about everybody that asks and everybody that seeks. If you ask, it'll be granted you'll receive it. And if you seek, you'll find. And if you knock, it'll be open. So in other words, what do you need to know? One of the things that I've learned about God's Word is whatever you're looking at, look at what's before it and look at what's after it because that will tell you more about what you're actually studying. Okay? There's a reason why scriptures are placed where they are placed in the Bible. Okay. If you are busy judging somebody else for their sin, you are ignoring your sin, and your sin's getting a stronger hold on you. The longer you stay in a sin, the more demons come in with that sin, okay? You've got a gatekeeper that opens the, the, the door, gets in the door, and stands there and holds the gate open so the other demons can come in. The longer you're in sin, the longer the gate is open and the more demons come in. Demons want to be any place but hell, okay? Hell is an ugly, nasty, awful place, and they don't want to be there. And if they can't attach to a person, they get to be up here with us, all right? So... Anything they can do to come up here and be with us, they're going to do that. And they're going to hang on. And they're going to try to keep you from seeing that you're in sin so they can stay longer. Because it's more comfortable up here by far. When they're down there, Satan's beating them up and torturing them. And when they're up here, you know, it's not so bad. So, what do you think your biggest problem is? Let's look at some of the people from biblical times and how Satan used this trick on them. Eve. Eve thought that her biggest problem was God was holding her back from being like him. This is a word for somebody, y'all. I got this when I was writing this sermon. This is a word for somebody. There's a woman that's listening to this podcast and you have been saying, God is holding me back. I don't know why he won't let me have that. The Lord says to you, woman of God, that although your heart is truly to serve the Lord, He is holding you back for your good, like Eve. He is holding you back because you have pride in your heart over the gifts. And He says, you need to humble yourself and submit. Submit. He says you don't like the word submit. You feel like that makes you under somebody. But the Lord says that you know who you're supposed to be submitting to and you're not doing it. You're going your own way quietly. You're kind of acting like maybe you're going to submit and then you just go off and do your own thing, don't you? And he said that he will not allow your promotion until your heart is right and your walk is right and in submission to the authority he has placed over you. He says for you to stop saying, oh, you're going to, you, you, when somebody tries to get you, to, when this person tries to get you to submit, you say, oh, well, oh, okay, I'm going to pray about that and then you don't submit. You don't pray about it. And he says for you to stop saying that you're praying about something when you know you are supposed to submit. Or he will put you into a wilderness journey to refine you that you will beg to be released from. Submit. Eve's problem, she thought it was that God was holding her back, but Eve's problem is that she was tempted by what was not allowed. But Satan told her that her problem was God was holding her back. Oh, you won't surely die. God knows that when you eat th this fruit, that your eyes will be open and you'll be like Him. Adam. 
Adam thought his problem was Eve, which I think is hysterical. That, that Eve tempted him to sin. Adam really thought that was his problem. Genesis 3.12 And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Adam's problem... <laughs> Adam's problem was that he was not standing in his authority as spiritual head of the marriage, and Adam was not resisting temptation when it came to him. He wanted to please Eve, so he ate the fruit. That's called idolatry. Favoring a person, place, thing, or activity more than you favor God's word and his commands. Abel and Cain. We're going to talk about Cain, not Abel. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, 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 and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Cain thought his problem was God's favoritism towards Abel. Cain's problem was his anger and the fact that he was a spoiled, pouty baby. King David, apparently... King David thought his problem was he needed some time off and somebody else's wife. King David's problem was he wasn't where he was supposed to be and he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. The Bible very clearly says he was laying on his bed. It was like the evening or the afternoon. He was laying on his bed at a time when kings go to battle. He was a king. He was supposed to be at battle. And he was abusing his power as king of Israel. Satan told King David his problem was he needed Bathsheba. Much grief came out of that. Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot thought his problem was that Jesus was not going to set up his, an earthly kingdom and make him CEO of the financial department. See, that's what the disciples believed because nobody could comprehend that the way that his kingdom was going to come was he was going to die on the cross. The cross looked like defeat to them. I mean, if, if you're running around with a leader and you're helping them do everything and they're doing all these miracles and you think they're going to come into power and they die, you're like, it's done. It's over. we got to go get a job now. Right? So Judas thought, you know, he's like, well, I'm going to hang out with Jesus and when Jesus gets his kingdom, I'm going to be his right-hand man. I'm going to be the financial director of the corporation. That's what he thought. So when that plan fell through, when, when Jesus kind of went off on them for, um, they were complaining because Mary had poured the expensive ointment. She had broken the alabaster box and poured the expensive ointment on Jesus because he was about to be, he was, she knew somehow God had revealed to her that he was going to die. So she was anointing him for his burial. And they got upset because it was worth a year's wages. That would be a pretty costly perfume if it was worth a year of your wages, wouldn't it? So when G Judas realized, oh, that's not the plan at all. This is not what's going to happen. He decided to make a little bit of money by selling Jesus instead. And he realized his mistake, but too late. See, Satan kept his eyes on his sin. Off his sin. I'm sorry. Off his sin. Satan kept his eyes on the whole thing with Jesus. And oh no, the plan's fallen through. Now what I'm going to do? You know, um, the Pharisees are mad at all of us. They're the ones in power. So I need to get favor with the Pharisees. And I need to make some money now because, you know, kingdom's not coming through. So I need to go find another plan. Because Judas really wasn't interested in spreading the gospel. That was not his thing. In each of these cases... Satan managed to get someone looking at something other than their own shortcomings. None of us is perfect enough that we should have a lot of time to be judging others, are we? I know I'm not. So if we're busy looking around at everybody else going, well, they shouldn't be doing that. What's happening in our own backyard? You know, the, those weeds of sin are just getting taller and taller and taller while we're looking at other people's sin. And if we're busy pulling the weeds in our own backyard, we won't get into some of that stuff that the devil has planned for us, like some of these stories. We need to take time and examine our hearts at the very deepest level for the truth of the question, what is our biggest problem? Is it really what we think it is? Because in every case where I've looked back and examined mine, it wasn't where I thought it was, y'all. It wasn't. We need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, who was given to us as a teacher, 
to reveal to us what Satan is hiding from us to keep us from growing, from moving forward, and from getting closer to Jesus. Because we don't need to be walking around deceived about what our problem really is. Y'all know what I mean? I don't have a normal length podcast for y'all today. Um, This was the message that the Lord gave to me. I've been in a lot of prayer for the people on, um, on the Texas coast because of the devastation of that storm Harvey. The rain hit us today, you can see in the window behind me. I, you know, I lived on the Texas coast for years and a lot of the places that they're talking about down there I've lived or worked in. And it's hard for me to watch. It's real hard for me to watch. And I do I do have some family down there. I have some cousins and stuff like that down there. It's very hard for me to watch what's happening. And I'm really concerned that when these waters go down, there's a lot more who have died than what they know. So I'm I'm really sad about that. And that probably affected my ability to study very well. And I apologize to you for that. I hope that you get a lot out of this message anyway. I hope that this will help each of us to examine our hearts and say, what is my biggest problem really? If I take away the problem I think it is, if I think it's X, and let's just say that, let's just pretend that problem's been solved, then where am I in my walk? We need to think about this. And what have I been looking at and what have I been spending time thinking about? You know, so we need to get an idea, is the devil misdirecting our attention? Because it's like, it's like when a magician does a trick, you know? He's going to do a trick, he does something to draw your attention over here, and meanwhile over here he's doing, you know, the thing that deceives you into thinking that he can do magic. It's a sleight of hand. So he draws your attention over here so he can hide his sleight of hand over here so that the deception will be complete. And that's what he's doing to a lot of us. And we need to be wise to his tricks, y'all, because his tricks are going to get a lot stronger. A lot stronger. And we need to be wise, wise, wise. We need to be carrying a lot of wisdom with us. We need to have a lot of discernment. But anyway, that's all I have for y'all. I hope that y'all are having a great week. Thanks for watching, and Jesus bless you. Till next week.